Line plots. When you have a lot of numerical data or information, it can be really hard to understand it all at once. We learned about graphs that can show you numbers in four or five or six categories. But what if you have much more data than that? Imagine you want to know how many siblings each of your classmates has. You ask every kid how many brothers and sisters they have and write down the numbers. So your data looks like this. Can you imagine showing this data person by person? A graph with so many categories would take a long time to make. Also, it will look complicated and will not be very helpful. When we have so much data, we need to reorganize it into a manageable number of categories. And there are several kinds of graphs we can use to show this kind of data. The first is a line plot, which shows data along a number line. To make a line plot, just draw a number line with a range that includes all of the numbers in your data. Then, draw a cross to represent each number. If the same number appears more than once, draw several crosses on top of each other. Let's practice with the sibling data. Draw a line plot representing the number of siblings of all the students in the class below. If we look at our data, we see that the number of siblings ranges from 0 to 5. Our number line should have the same range. Now, we will go through our list of data and mark it on the number line. Jenny has 0 siblings, so we'll put a cross above 0 on our line. Bob has one sibling, so we'll put a cross above the one. We can fill in the rest of the line plot the same way. A quick way to check ourselves is to count all of the X's. We have 19 crosses, which is the same number as the pieces of data in our table. This means we haven't forgotten any data points. Now you know how to make line plots. Let's learn how to read these plots and answer questions about them. Look at this line plot. Boy's hair length in Mrs. Wilson's class. This plot shows how long the hair of different boys in Mrs. Wilson's class is. The number line shows the lengths. The first tick mark represents 0 inches. The second represents 0 0.25 inches. The third represents 0 0.50 inches and so on until 2 inches. The crosses above the line show how many boys have hair of a particular length. For example, there is no cross above the tick mark labeled 0, so no boys have a hair length of 0. There are three crosses above the 0 0.75 inch mark. This means that three boys have hair this long. How many boys have hair that is shorter than one inch? There are five crosses to the left of the one inch mark, so five boys have hair that is shorter than one inch. What is the difference between the longest hair length and the shortest hair length? The longest hair length is one and a half inches. 
You can tell because this is the last tick mark that has any crosses above it. The shortest hair length is 0.25 inches, the first tick mark that has a cross above it. The difference, then, is 1.25 inches. Let's try another one. Some kids are reading books over the summer. The line plot shows how many books each kid read. How many kids read four books? The tick mark representing four books must be between the tick marks labeled 3 and 5. There are two crosses above it, so two kids read four books. What was the fewest number of books read? The fewest number of books read is two. This is the first tick mark that has a cross above it. Let's review the lesson.